Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and final round at the 2019 South Florida Open presented by Latitude 64. We're here at Tradewinds Park on Sunday afternoon for, like I said, our fourth round and I'm again joined by Thomas Gilbert. And Thomas, you managed to make up a single stroke <laughs> yep. on Chris on the day before, but now you got a couple other guys right there in the hunt with you with Benjamin and Cole. Uh, how do you feel about moving over to this Tradewinds Park? Um, I feel like it's a pretty good course, especially for my game. It's fairly open and a lot of uh, big hyzers to execute. So hoping to just play the best golf I can and see what happens. Yeah, and we know that Chris Dickerson is so tough to beat. Uh, and, and that's not, of course, special or unique to Florida. That's anywhere he goes. Yeah. As he, he's won more than 50% of the tournaments he's ever entered, which mm -hmm. is incredible in itself. Uh, do you think about how much you want to challenge him? Or are you thinking at all about, you know, holding off the guys right behind you as you park the shot on one? Um, all I'm thinking about currently is catching Chris. Uh, every shot I throw is trying to get closer to Chris. Uh, I didn't really think about my competitors too much at this point. All right. Well, and that may or may not change as the uh, round moves on. But Benjamin here parking hole one. What a great shot. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing Cole for the first time this tournament. Now, I've seen him a number of times. He's also graciously helped with commentary for this event. Uh, but it also looks like he's got a good shot on one. Everybody yeah. really getting to it here except for Dickerson. Yeah, and those are really impressive shots. Hole one is a uh, tricky gap to hit off the gap. Chris did come up short. Do you have any idea what those circles are all about? Um, no, I'm just as confused as you are probably. <laughs> I was wondering that myself. Well, here you are lining up. You got pin high and what a great start. Little confidence builder to get going. Yeah, definitely. No birdie putt is too easy, I feel like, at the beginning of a round, right? You're always just trying to build that confidence. Yeah, but it's nice to have a medium-sized one just to get that extra confidence where you know you can hit that putt and you should every time, but it's still a distance that can build the confidence that you need for the rest of the round. Well, I'll give a quick shout out. A tournament uh, that dates back almost 30 years in Wisconsin, they painted circles all around kind of just like this. And if you landed in one, rather than getting an OB stroke, you had to throw with your opposite hand. <laughs> and uh, that, was, um, that was the Pickle Memorial event in Sheboygan, a lot of fun. and and uh, a guy that actually influenced Barry Schultz quite a bit. So uh, th that's what those circles made me think of. <laughs> okay. All right, hole two, set it up for us at 383, almost the same distance. Yeah, so I like to play the forehand hyzer, as you guys just saw. And um, it's just slightly to the right, tucked into the tree line. And you really just want to throw as clean of a shot up the middle as you can as Ben pulls a little bit to the right. And he might be in the rough there. He doesn't manage to break through. Yeah, Cole looks like he turned that over a little too much as well. He's going to be in a similar spot. And now for this course, there's going to be an exception, I think, later on in the round due to some uh, wet conditions. But you guys are now playing all to the DGA Mach X baskets. And that's... Yes something worth noting as we're seeing the uh, <laughs> yeah. prodigy basket come into view. <laughs> yeah, again, it's interesting to have those different layouts and different basket positions throughout the course. Makes it fun to challenge yourself with different layouts. Yeah, you can really get creative as a tournament director, as a league director, knowing that you always have so many uh, combinations out there and available to you. So if, if somehow your park or property can afford to have multiple baskets set up at once. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. So after Chris went a little deep of the basket, he's throwing back toward the pin, and that gets up and rolls on him just a little bit. Here's Ben. Looks to be about 40 feet or so. Oh, this clangs off the rim. A really solid run, but that's going to be a bogey for him in the early goings. Yeah. 
Nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was just going to say, and you're off to a good start. I feel like we saw that uh, in another round out here where you just got yourself off to a really good start, uh, getting things going early, um, trying to find that pressure you can, picking up at least two here on Chris in the first two holes. Yeah. He still has to make his putt. Yeah, his roll a little bit further, so we're all kind of walking over to see where it went. <laughs> but, yeah, close enough. Not too bad. No, no snakes or alligators were found. <laughs> no. But it's still, it's got to feel great. Uh, two holes in, you know, you started nine back of Chris, and two holes in, you've already picked up two. You can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, I was feeling pretty good after those first two, and was just hoping to keep them going as we go into the next hole. A little bit of trickery with hole three, almost again the same distance, 366. Uh, you guys start off in this darker area. That's why you see a lot of the colors really struggling uh, on the camera. Yeah. And then you go out to this widened space, and there's OB on that left side. Were you familiar with just how close no, it was? I, I, I didn't realize how close that line was. I thought it might have been on the other side of the tree line, but it ran just between or on the right side of those trees but also the right side of the fairway along the entire brush line was OB, as you can see, kind of flagged and painted. Yeah, so this hole at under 400 feet has plenty of accuracy required. Yeah. And so you go left, Cole went right, and now that just barely, that's less than a meter out of bounds. He's not quite pin high, but that's right next to you and less than a meter OB as well. Mm -hmm. I think both me and Chris were just about a foot out of bounds. And and ben, Ben's probably thinking, I'm just going to put this one right up the middle and yeah. <laughs> maybe pick up a stroke on these guys. Yeah, smart shot just to play it down, even not going for all the distance, but just keep it controlled. And like the previous few days, I feel like we've been blessed with some good weather, not too hot. And uh, it certainly doesn't appear to be too windy at this point. No. Yeah, great conditions. Hoping to make them some scoring conditions. And like you said, Chris, probably within just a few feet of yours. And these puddles that you can see all along the fairway are actually a lot better than it was uh, just a couple days ago. The The course was absolutely flooded and this basket had all the way up to the lock with water. Wow, and, and that's gonna come into play in a few holes where we talk about, uh, you know, one of the, one or two of the temporary holes that you guys are playing due to some of that excessive flooding that just didn't find a way to dry up over the last few days. So uh, we'll see when that comes into play with a few holes later. Mm -hmm. I know at one point I got thoroughly confused, but it seemed like you guys knew what you were doing, so I'll just follow the along. Yeah. <laughs> and the par will uh, take the box and pick up a stroke on everyone. Yeah. This is one of the first two or three that we'll really see the water, uh, you know, at least somewhat come into play. Now, this should be a relatively easy hyzer shot for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to just swing it out wide and then let it carry. But you kind of got to go underneath the branches if you want to park the hole. Because if you go too high, you can just crash and fall about 60 feet short. As I catch the tree trunk there. Yep, yeah, and now the path or any of the area around it is not out of bounds in this case. Is that correct? Just the water? Yep, just the water. Wow. You can hear the crowd cheering there in the background for Cole's great shot. Yep, seemed like they got a little bit louder and more active as the round went on, understandably. Yeah, it was nice to have a little bit bigger of a gallery this final day. I guess I didn't realize that this plays all of 423. Uh, 
maybe some of you guys just made it look easy, but mm -hmm. 423 was a, a legit pull on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what you were thinking? Yeah, I was just thinking, man, left it low and slid into the puddle there. <laughs> like, ah, got my towel over my shoulder. Here's Cole to pick up a stroke. There it is. Nice. Solid. I think we listen into a little conversation with you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you decide the casual relief takes you too far away from the pen. Yeah. So there's a casual relief uh, component to this. And then uh, in just a moment, I know I ask you in the, in the moment as to what was going on. I think you give me a brief explanation. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting to go. You can go, it's fine. I thought we would take it far side, which would be. All right, explain to everyone in case they're confused what just happened. My disc landed in a puddle, and I was wondering if I could mark my lie and then just step lightly on top of the water, touch the grass, so I don't have to get my foot wet but I misbalanced and fell in anyway. So, just step in the water next time. <laughs> well, there's the, the pro tip there. Yeah, that, that's always tough because, of course, yeah, you're trying to keep your foot as dry as possible. And then uh, with casual relief rules as to where you need to be and, and you know, what you want to take for relief, I can understand that being a, a difficult situation. Yeah. So just under 300 feet, we're looking at, uh, this should be a, a relatively routine hyzer all day. Oh yeah. It should be just a little hyzer, swing it out wide over the water and you wanna just kind of land it by the trunk of this tree and take a little skip towards the basket. And good looking shot there. And I quickly look at the score seeing that Cole had knotted up Ben here on the previous hole with his birdie. Mm -hmm. And you still sit seven behind Chris. Well, Chris leaks his shot a little bit high, so he'll have this putt left for his birdie. Oh. Yeah, and uh, Chris a little bit frustrated there. And, and you could tell just by his body English, when he reached down to pick up his mini, he had almost no doubt that was in. Like, yeah. he really thought it was, you know, and he, he's as good a putter as they get anywhere in the world. So usually you can trust his judgment. But uh, that one was just a tad off for him. And there you are, ready to swoop in and pick up yet another stroke. Yeah, I think Chris is just a little frustrated with himself with the slow start. Definitely uncharacteristic for him. And Cole, every time he's putting, it seems like it's for birdie. Another yeah. good birdie for him. And the gallery shall move on. We got another water hole. Thanks again to Latitude 64, our presenting sponsor of the event. It's, and what a daunting hole. Yeah, I just want to say it's super scary shot out to this peninsula green. And Cole just parks it. 
444 just a, a heiser park job for him no big deal yeah i guess no big deal <laughs> <laughs> what are you throwing here i'm throwing a pretty overstable pd2 just kind of hammering it out flat knowing that it will fade and, and won't really turn towards the water but i need to aim a little bit wider kind of commit more like coals yeah, it's probably easy to be scared of that water, though. The one mistake to make would be to come up short. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes you can make here and then walk away all right. But the last thing you want to do is is come up short and not find the peninsula on that far side, somewhere on that peninsula. Yeah, like Ben shot there. He hides out early and, and nearly goes into the brush, but that's a much better mistake to make. And I really like the line here by Chris. Yeah, this looks really good. Oh. Just skipped out the back. Yeah, and he could not tell, as you kind of heard him here say, you know, don't you dare tell me that went out. And it did. Uh, just too much power for him to get onto that green and then pass the basket. Yeah. And here's my opportunity. Oh, and out of my hand, I thought that was in. But <laughs> it did look good. Just dropped a little bit. Wow, and uh, talk about resilience and, and just maintaining that focus. A little frustrated that he juiced it too far to go past the basket, but then to still make the putt and walk away with the par, you know, as you, can, as you just did, you can see he's not going to lose any ground to you at least. Although Cole is right there, ready to pick up yet another birdie. Mm -hmm. You can hear the light wind. Uh, certainly one of my favorite greens here on this course, so to speak. I mean, just so picture, you know, perfect, picture yeah. perfect. Yeah. So we move over to hole number seven. Cole still with not only the, the tee, but also all the momentum in the world. And I really like the line he put his disc on here, kind of hugging it and turning it over with an overstable disc that he knows is going to flex back and executed really well. And here I got like gonna, yeah, yeah, what are you what are you doing there? You hung it wider. Yeah, I was trying to play uh, the Anheuser the whole way with a uh, flippier Thunderbird and kind of threw it a little too high, but I have a pretty long look at the basket. And Ben over turns his. Yes. And he's going to come up short. I mean, thankfully, you know, I mean, if you don't throw a great tee shot here, you should have no problem getting up and down. It should be an easy three. You know, almost anyone should be able to just get up and down and take the three. Yeah. Only really bad mistake you can make here is pulling it too far right into the woods. But as you see, there's plenty of fairway out there to land in and still have an open look and approach to the basket. Yeah, not Chris's best effort by any means on that drive. Well, that was a pretty good effort right there. <laughs> he almost makes up for it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's one way to follow up a uh, less than stellar drive. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> oh, the high, uh, <laughs> high the kick. Rock, Rockettes high kick there. I like yeah. it. Yeah. How's that feel? That felt really good. I was hoping to hit down a big putt like that sometime this weekend. That was a great shot there. Good birdie. And yet again, another stroke you're going to pick up here on Dickerson. Mm -hmm. That brings you to within five. Yeah. And then there's Mr. Automatic. Yeah. Cole, who's now, you know, just the two off of you, and he's in within seven with about uh, 10 or 11 holes to play. Yeah, he's just chugging along, getting the birdies. Doing a really good job here on this course. Yeah, uh, is this a course he plays frequently? Did I hear him say, or is this one that he, I think he actually kind of avoids in casual play? Is that correct with all that water? Um, yeah, I'd probably avoid some of the water holes, but if I was nearby as well, but I believe he he lives 
like 10 to 20 minutes away from this course. So moving over here to hole eight, and now we're playing instead to the prodigy basket, right? So this is yeah. some form of a, is it just to the shorter pin position? Is that the, Yeah, you know? The, you can kind of see the other basket out to the right, and it, it was just super soggy, and they didn't want players to have to get their feet wet and stuff going through the bush and losing their discs kind of in the swampy area, so they decided just easier to have us play to this basket which I'm thankful for <laughs> <laughs> yeah you already got your foot wet, wet once yeah very nice shot there I think it's really tricky to control an Anheuser for this long of a flight to have it pan out just perfectly well <laughs> Hard for some unless, people. <laughs> yeah, unless you're Chris. Now, I do want to note, I believe on the scorecard, it was marked at this 490 as if you guys were playing the other basket. Is that is that possible that this is really 383? Does that seem more realistic? Yeah, I, I would say because I, I was throwing a fairway driver and it just turned it over real too hard. So I wouldn't be surprised if it played a little shorter than that. Okay. Um, again, looking at the... Oh, and Cole almost ringing up another one. I, I, I am seeing on the scorecard, though, that it says, well, it says 383. That's to a, from a different pin to the Mach X, so I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Somewhere between 380 and, and four, 490. Some <laughs> are probably splitting the difference. Yeah. As you mentioned, great drive for Chris. It, uh, we didn't really realize back on the tee that it had kind of, you know, just fought through those branches or those little limbs to then still end up right next to the basket. No, yeah. Little, All we could hear was the, the cheers from the spectators. A little, uh, little love there for the guy out in the lead. Yep. So we're going to move over to hole number 10, skipping hole 9. This is going to be the last one of our front half of coverage, so to speak. And 276, but an island green, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the island is, I would say, just a little bit bigger than the circle. And so you really just want to put it as close as you can. That's also inside the circle. And as we start to sort of wrap things up, I want to thank Yuha and Pat, of course, our, our, our two main guys making sure that this event goes down the way it has along with latitude 64 thank you guys all so much for the sport and you find yourself the high forehand inbounds on the on the island yep this hole is kind of unique it's it's wide enough that you can kind of just throw the shot that you're most comfortable with hitting the island as you see ben throws the slight hyzer chris with the straight shot me with the forehand spike uh and Cole through his flip up sidearm, but unfortunately misses his putt. Somewhat surprising considering how hot his putter has been in the early going snow. Uh, yeah. I feel like those are both uncharacteristic for me and Cole. Yeah, you guys have been uh, making things look easy as Ben tracks that one in. He's lined up for the birdie as. Looks like Chris is going to be in a moment. So what I'd like to know, everyone, you've seen three courses so far. Snyder, uh, the... Markham. Markham, thank you. And then this course. So I'd like to know in the comments, in order to get your chance to win a disc, which course do you like the best thus far? I know you've only seen half this one. It's kind of similar uh, on the backside. But which course do you like the best? Snyder, Markham, or Trade Winds? Leave that in the comments for your chance to win a disc. And All right, looking forward to close this out on the back nine. We'll see you over there, Thomas. Thanks.